Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72 Welcome to Wicked Wednesday, where we discuss all the new comics that's coming out this week. Every Wednesday is like Christmas for us nerds because that's when the new comics come out. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. But here's some other information first. Happy 2018, people! We are here! There's only two more years to go in this decade. Can you believe it? Over the holidays, I took a little break, but I was still active. For example, I posted the top 10 comics of 2017. Make sure you go back and watch that. There'll be a link in the description. And I took December 20th and 27th off, so there was no Wicked Wednesday on those days. However, I still did a pick of the week. For December 20th, it was Marvel 2-in-1 number 1, which stars one half of the Fantastic Four, The Thing and Johnny Storm. Marvel 2 and 1 is something Marvel used to do in the late 70s, early 80s. It always start the thing in every issue, and they had a standalone team up with some other usually D-list star. It was a chance to give some lesser known characters some time to shine and protect Marvel's copyright on those characters by continuously publishing them. With Disney buying Fox and the Fantastic Four's rights housed over at Fox, it means that the rights of the Fantastic Four could go back to Marvel, so Marvel is loosening up their position a little bit about publishing the Fantastic Four, which they canceled right before Fan Four Stick dropped. So Marvel 2 and 1 is back. I can get with that. For December 27th, the pick of the week was Hawkman Found, number one from DC Comics. This is a Dark Knight's Mail tie-in, which tries to explain exactly what happened to Hawkman. DC did their whole top-to-bottom relaunch with Rebirth and rebooted the whole universe. This was back in spring and summer of 2016, and Hawkman was nowhere to be found. He's still a very valuable and important character in the DC universe, so he has to show up eventually. But the problem is that his look is outdated. He seriously needs an upgrade, and he seriously needs a makeover. When you cosplay this character, you see how campy it looks. He just does not look cool. Okay, that catches us up from what happened over the holidays, but now it's time for the first Wicked Wednesday for 2018. And DC Comics has given us Batman, 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 and more Batman. They shouldn't call it DC for Detective Comics. They should call it BC for Batman. Batman comics. But that's not an insult, that's a realization. Because we all love Batman in all the different eras, myself included. And the more Batman DC gives us, the more we buy it because we just love Batman. He is by far the greatest comic book character ever created. This week we get Batman issue number 38 and Tom King is having a really great run on this character. This is part one of a new story arc called The Origin of Bruce Wayne. The Oliver Coppel cover B variant also looks outstanding. Bats on that motorcycle gives you that look like why did you cut me off in traffic? Next up is Batman and the Signal, number one of a three-part miniseries. This is basically a platform to give more shine to his new protege, Duke Johnson. And both of these covers look great, by the way. People are not paying that much attention at the beginning of the year, so I expect to sell out on this in second prints to come. Speaking of second prints, Holy Second Print Batman, Batman Annual Number 2 is also going to a second print. It's a story that centered upon Batman and Catwoman's complicated relationship in the early years. This was originally published back on November 28th. Batman and Catwoman stories are always fan favorites. Next up is Harley and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica, number four of a six-part miniseries. This is a cross-universe pairing of DC characters with Archie comic characters. In no way is it in canon or supposed to be taken seriously. Issue number four is also giving us a Jenny Frizen cover Cover. She was red hot in 2017 with her Wonder Woman covers. This cover is not up to the level of quality of those. I think she's taken on too many projects lately and it's making her quality slip a little bit. Next up is the Jetsons number three and yes this is based on the cartoon from back in the day. There's a few tweaks from the cartoon. For example they aged up his son and made his wife a NASA scientist. If you're a Jetsons fan then you'll definitely like this. Next up is Exit Stage Left. The Snagglepuss Chronicles, issue number one of a six-part miniseries. And yes, this is based on the Hanna-Barbera cartoon character from back in the day. And let's address the 800-pound gorilla in the room. The Snagglepuss character was intended to be gay, but you couldn't talk about that stuff out loud back in those days. But they did give you hints. In 2018, DC has passed over all the winks and nods and has just outed the character as basically being gay. And this continuity is the year 1953 and Snagglepuss is a stuttering gay playwright. And he's the biggest thing going on Broadway. But he becomes the focus of a persecution by the House Committee of Un-American Activities. And they declare that he's being subversive to American interest. This committee actually did exist. This is fact, not fiction. And they were targeting gay activists, civil rights leaders, accusing people they didn't like as being communists and somehow un-American. They literally tried to tear up the First Amendment. That was a real dark time in our country's history. So the Snagglepuss story is basically a fictional story based on real events, so that should make it very interesting. Next up, let's see what Marvel is up to. 
and that's going to be Black Bolt number nine. Issue number one make my list of one of the top 20 comics of 2017, and this is easily one of the best titles that you're not reading. Black Bolt has just escaped from space jail, and he's back on Earth, but he finds out things are not so friendly here either. That's an awesome cover with Captain America on it, but you can see Black Bolt's reflection in Cap Shield. Next up is Guardians of the Galaxy number 150. Marvel is returning to the original numbering with the Legacy Initiative, so that's why the number is so high. Marvel seems to be pretty serious about pushing this title, so they gave it an Alex Ross cover, which looks terrific. Overall, they're shipping this with eight different covers, including a John Tyler Christopher trading card cover, but that cover was not available at the time I made this video. Next up is Phoenix Resurrection, Return of Jean Grey, number two of a five-part miniseries. Fox's next X-Men movie is going to be a Jean Grey as the Dark Phoenix story, with Sophie Turner reprising her role, so the Jean Grey character is hotter than ever. So Marvel is pushing a lot of stuff about her with new stories and reprints. Next up is The Rise of the Black Panther, number one of a six-part miniseries. At the time I made this video, we're about six weeks from the release of the live-action Black Panther movie, and I couldn't be more excited. I expect for Marvel to give us a lot of material in the comics to take advantage of that fact. This six-issue miniseries is going to give us the secret origin of the Black Panther. It's the same creative team that's working on the standard Black Panther comic with Tanisha Coates and Brian Stale Freeze. They could have told this story in the Black Panther proper comic, but a new issue number one is going to be very exciting, and for marketing purposes, I understand why they did this. With the movie coming out, it might be a good jumping on point for new fans. Next up is the speculation pick of the week. And that's going to be Rogue and Gambit, number one of a five-part miniseries. I'm definitely looking forward to this. I'm curious to see how Marvel is going to handle their relationship going forward. They've had a romantic link on and off since Jim Lee was drawn to X-Men in the early 1990s. They hinted at this too in the early 1990s animated show, but it was more about Gambit trying to get with her and Rogue being a whole lot more reluctant. But no doubt, these characters have awesome chemistry. Kind of on again, off again, on again type of thing. The Rogue character is a real tortured soul because if she touches anyone, then she can absorb their power and wind up killing them by accident. Could you ever imagine that you couldn't touch another person in your life? That would really suck. Rogue and Gambit are going to be two of the most cosplayed characters you're going to find at the cons. They're both beloved characters and it doesn't break the bank to try to recreate the uniform. In this continuity, Kitty Pryde is the new leader to X-Men, and she's sending Rogue and Gambit on an undercover mission to rescue some kidnapped mutants. But expect some romance in there as well. In terms of collecting history, the Rogue character's first appearance is in Avengers Annual Number 10 from 1981. She made her debut as a villain, actually. The Gambit character makes his first full appearance in X-Men Number 266 from 1990. However, he made a cameo with no dialogue, which came out about two weeks before in X-Men Annual Number 14. So make sure you look out for that as well. A Gambit solo live action movie is still on the table with Channing Tatum still attached. We have no idea when we're going to get this. We'll have to see what happens with the whole Fox being bought out by Disney thing. As for this new comic miniseries, yes, you want to be down with this. Next up is Star Wars issue number 41. What can I say? Every month that this comes out, you should be picking this up. This is one of Marvel's highest quality projects in terms of writing and art. The John Tyler Christopher action figure covers also continue. They're running out of characters, so they're using real D-list characters you never heard of, but they still look good. So if you're an action figure completist, they know you're going to get these two. Next up is our report on independent comics and small publishers. First up is Hatchet number two from American Mythology Productions. If you like 1980s slasher movies like Freddy and Jason, then this is for you. Next up, and also from American Mythology, is Underdog 1975 number one. This is an unpublished, forgotten about story from the 1970s that seen light for the first time. Underdog was one of my favorite cartoons when I was a kid. Next up is Cosmo number one from Archie Comics. Archie Comics publishes more than just Archie, and they do things like this as well. This is part one of a new story arc called Space Aces. Join Cosmo and his Martian crew as they find adventures in the deepest corners of space. The print runs on Archie Comics are low, so this could become a surprise hit. Next up is Planet of the Apes, Ursus number one from Boom Studios. This is part one of a six part mini series, which details the plans of General Ursus and how he plans to take out humanity. And he really, really, really hates humans. If you're a Planet of the Apes fan, then this is for you. Next up is Giants number two, is a five part mini series from Dark Horse. This is about a future world in which the world is overrun by giant monsters and how humanity has to survive. You're definitely not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Next up, and also from Dark Horse Comics, is Koshi, the Deathless, number one of a six-part miniseries. 
This is written by Mike McNola and it's a tie in with the Hellboy franchise. This franchise is going to get rebooted in live action movies again with David Harbour playing the lead character. So they're giving us more Hellboy backstory in the comics to lay a solid foundation for the movie when it drops. And with the success of Deadpool and Logan, they're going to be smart enough to make this rated R this time. Hellboy is a superhero horror story, so it should be rated R. Next up is Ninja K number one, which is going to a second print from Valiant Comics. I've been telling you guys for years just how great the Valiant universe is. I did a video previously talking about the Ninja character and how cool he is. I'll put a link in the description. Next up, and also from Valiant Comics, is Secret Weapons number zero. Secret Weapons number one made my list of one of the top 10 comics of 2017. It's a spinoff from the Harbinger universe. I'll put a link in the description about what's going on so you can watch that and catch up. One of the breakout characters in the miniseries was a girl that can talk to birds. She's a member of a group of kids with a bunch of oddball powers. It basically feels like one of the best mutant stories that Marvel never wrote. If you love the Secret Weapons miniseries, the number zero will give you some backstory on how we got to issue number one. In Secret Weapons number one, they never fully explain the origin of these characters, so the zero issue will do that here. Make sure you don't sleep on Valiant in 2018. They got in some incredible stuff coming. Next up is Star Wars Adventures Forces of Destiny Princess Leia number one. When Disney bought Star Wars I thought they would get the rights to all of the property but that's surely not the case because this is on IDW. So a Princess Leia solo story I don't care who publishes that. I want that. Next up let's see what Image is up to and that's going to be Big Hard Sex Criminal Volume 2 Deluxe Hardcover. This collects issues 11 through 20 of this award winning series. Written by Matt Fraction and drawn by Chip Sadarsky. It's a Sark Fantastic, snarky, fourth wall breaking, hilarious story about a man and a woman who can stop time when they orgasm. And yes, the cover is intentionally supposed to be like a phallic symbol, which is part of the gag. Retail on this is about $40, but Things From Another World is selling this for about $32. Next up is Crosswind number six. And this is getting buzz again because it's been optioned for a movie. It's a story of a mafia hitman who trades bodies with a shy Seattle housewife. It's like a mashup of Goodfellas meets Freaky Friday. The execution has kind of been uneven to me, but I really love the covers. Next up is Extremity number 10. Issue number one made my list of one of the top 20 comics of 2017. This is a fantasy war comic. The writer, artist, and creator Daniel Warren Johnson was discovered in an artist alley at a random con, which is great motivation for up and coming artists who haven't got discovered yet. Hey, keep working. You never know when you'll get a break. Next up is Spawn issue 281 and it promises that a new hero will premiere in this issue. The next issue will be the thrilling conclusion of the dark horror storyline. With Todd McFarlane now concentrating on the live action Spawn movie in the future, he put the comic in the hands of the Reg Savage writing and Jason Sean Alexander on the art and they've turned this into a top notch horror series, a whole lot less comic booky and more of the real traditional horror. I really like this direction on where Spawn is at. Next up is The Walking Dead issue 175. Have you ever seen seen a indie book be so relevant for so long. Well, other than Spawn, of course. There's a cover B variant that's absolutely stunning by Bill Senenkevich, which I expect to be in huge demand. Bill is the co-creator of Legion. There's a TV show about him on FX. This character made his first appearance back in the 80s in New Mutants. Bill is crossing over from that point of being a respected artist to becoming a legend. Some legends did their best work in the past, but he's doing his best work right now. You know the drill. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share these videos on social media so others learn about comic power. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. And don't forget to share this video, click on subscribe, give it a thumbs up and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow. Thank you for your support.